Hey, what's up, guys? This is Sean here again. So, so today let's take a look at uh, the last problem of this week's weekly contest. So, number one thousand six hundred forty-nine. Create sorted array through instructions. All right. So, given like a uh, integer array instructions, you are asked to create a sorted array from the element in instruction. You start with an empty containers. And for each element, you basically you search the uh, the instructions one by one, and every time when you do a, a insert, there's a cost. So the cost is like this. So the cost is the first the first the first part is this. Anything that is strictly smaller than the current instruction will be considered as left. I'll just use left here. And any numbers in the current uh, in the current uh, element which is strictly greater than the instruction will be will be right. Okay. And the cost is the minimum among those two. Okay. So it just asks you to find the total cost to insert all elements from the instructions. As you guys as you guys can see, since the, the the sequence is is fixed, so there's no minimum cost or maximum cost because there will only be one cost, and here it just asks you to find that cost. Okay, so and the constraints is like this: ten to the power of five. Okay. I mean a few examples, right? So let's let's say we have a one, two, three, six, four, six, four, five here. So the first time that the array is empty, right? And then you insert one. Then of course the cost, the answer, the, the answer is zero, or I can call it cost. The cost is zero because left, both left and right is equal to zero. Now you insert to right, uh, you insert two here, right? So when you insert two here. There's one small one number smaller than two, which is that's why the left is one, but there's nothing greater than two, so which means the right is zero. So that's why the second time is also zero. The third time similar same same thing, right? So the left now is two, but still right is zero. That's why third cost is also zero. Now the six, same thing, right? Zero. But now five, right? So when we insert five here, five should be inserted here. So there are three small. So left equals to three, and the, the right equals to one, right? So here, that's why we have one here, and in the end, we have uh, four here, right? So four will be inserted into here as well. So which means the left is is three, and the right is two. That's why. The last cost is two here, so the total cost is three. Right. So the I think the first, the first most uh, I mean the most naive way will be just do a do a binary search. We find the index here. We find the index on the, on the left uh, or the, and the index on the right, and then we just compare that. And then we update that array after the after the, the insertion I mean we update the array by inserting that array that number into the correct location so I'll give you the first uh, first approach real quick here so basically I have a answer here I have a numbers here I'm maintaining this assorted array and then I'm, a, I'm having a zero answer equals zero so for instructions in instructions right I have index index one here index one is the bisect bisect left right bisect left nums nums ins okay so this thing means that the index just it's telling me how many number is strictly smaller than in than the current instruction because I'm doing a bisect left Right, so let's say we have one, two, three, three, four.
And so the next, so let's say I'm inserting a three here. So the, the current instruction is three. Since I'm getting the by, I'm using the bisect left, I'll be getting one here. So which means there's only one number that's smaller than me, right? So that's why the left it's, it's just equal to the index one. And the, and the how about the the right? How about the, the numbers that are greater than me? I cannot use the same index because let's say, for example, as you guys can see, I have three, three, I have two threes here. If I use this index, I'll get three numbers instead of one. So how can I do that? I mean, a simple, a, a most, a simple, a simplest way is just a, or a easiest way. is just do another binary search by using the bisect left, uh, right. Now we're having like number. Eight. So in this case, if we do a bisect right, we'll get what? We'll get the uh, we'll get the index from here to here, so that the right will simply becomes the length of the numbers, right? Minus minus index two. And now we can I can simply update the answer with the minimum of the left and the right. Okay, and then I I need to update that. So by updating that, I'm using a bisect insert, right? Insert, insert numbers and instruction. And in the end, I simply return the answer. So that's it. Okay, run the code. All right, submit. I forgot to do a modular by this here, by these things here. And 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. It's accepted, but as you guys can see, it's pretty slow, almost TLE. So the reason is that, you know, what's the time complexity for this? I mean, let's say we have an N here, right? So of course we have a, a we have an N here. And uh, so here is like log N, right? Both the bisect, they are both log N, but there is, you know, this bisect insert, if you look, if you look up Python documentations, so this bisect insert is bounded with the with the worst case O of n. So for this solution, actually it's more like an n square. It's not n log n because of this insert. I mean, you can use like sorted list to improve that, but that's I think that's a, a more advanced structure. Anyway, so that's the first approach, just by using a bisect a binary search and then uh, while maintaining like this sorted list here. And a second approach is that, you know, every time when you guys see this kind of like, you want to find anything, what's going to be the total number on your left and what's going to, what are the numbers on your right while maintaining a sorted list, something like that, right? And then you can always try to use a, a segment tree. Or in this case is like a, a binary index tree. So, so next I will try to explain how can we use the binary index tree to solve this problem. But this data structure is, is not like a, a easy one. So it's like a more advanced data structure. It's optional for those, for you guys who are really interested, you know, otherwise you, you guys can just stop here. So, okay. So what is the binary index tree or the segment tree? So the, the motivation for the binary index tree or segment tree is the uh, is to efficiently efficient efficiently maintain maintain an array while also efficiently getting get the the presum of that array. Mm. Because let's say we are storing the, the sorted number itself, 
right? And the time to update that sorted array will be O of n. And sorry, so to if you if we store the plain arrays to update an element, we take O one time to update, right? But to to update the prefix we need to do a we need to do a o of a linear scan because by updating one of the elements we could affect all the remaining prefix but if we do a prefix pre, a pre sum here not prefix but if if we are storing the pre sum inside of the plain arrays here of course to update an element to update the, the elements now the uh, the pre to up, update the prefix will only take o one time but but to update the element will take o of n time anyway so that's the uh, the motivation of the uh, of of creating this binary index tree so the the way the binary index tree works is like this you know we're creating like a, a tree structure where the uh, where the node is the is the number itself and it's it's one based so that's why I, we have a zero here and then we have one then we, we have two we have three then here's four and this is uh, eight we have and then five, six, seven, and then nine, ten, eleven. So how are we getting this tree structure here? So basically, you know, the how the every time when we have like numbers here, we're converting into its binary format. So here we have a zero, 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 one. Right here we have zero zero one zero. Here is uh, like zero zero one one. So on and so on and so forth. This is zero one zero zero. And the way we're constructing this tree is that every time we find the parent by removing the the least the least significant bit, which means that, for example, with 0011, one, we're, re, we're basically re, removing, uh, re, reversing that to zero, 0 to 1. We, we change this one to 0, uh, to, from 1 to 0 to find this parent, which is this 0010. Zero, zero, zero. Same thing for this one, right? So this is 0101, zero, one, zero, one. this is 0110. Zero, one, zero. So by removing these things, by re reversing this, the last, the the least significant bit bit of one here, we got four, and it's, uh, same thing for this one. That's we we also got four. So why we're creating this the trace like this? So at each of the location, each of the the numbers here, it represents the 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 sum from zero from the parent. To the current loc to the current number, so which means that, that from at at one here, it stores the sum, the, the pre sum from zero to one. Here it stores the, the sum from zero to two. Here it stores the sum from zero to four, zero to eight. Same thing for this one. At three here, so three stores the sum from two to three. Five stores sum from four to five. And here it's from four to six, so on and so forth. That's why this tree is called a segment tree, as you guys can see. So the it it's been each node is storing a segment of the sum or like a range of the sum. Right? So we have seven here. That's how we store that value. 
So now with this structure, we will need two op operations. The first one is the, to add a number. To add a number on this to uh, to this tree. The second type, the second operation is how can we query the sum given like an index. So the first thing first, how about the uh, let's take a look how to query this this index, uh, how to query the pre sum. Let's say by given like a, a seven here, by given seven, how can we get the how can we get the sum from zero to seven? As you guys can see here, so. The way it works is that since we have a we have a path here, so we just need to find the parent, and then parent, and then parent again until we reach the root, and then we summarize all the all the segments during during the tra during the traversing back to the root. Then we will have the answer, right? So it's pretty straightforward. So from seven we find six, and then we have a we have a num we have a range from six to seven, and then plus what plus six to four. And then we have a range of four to six, and then the finally we have four to four to zero, right? Then we have a zero, zero to four. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's a, like a, a inclusive. I mean, we're not including the the parent, but I'm just uh, I'm doing this. Okay, how about this? So, so four is not included, but six is. Okay, so zero is not included, but four is six. Is four is. So all we need to do is just we just need to keep keep looking, keep looking at to its the current node parent, and then we we accumulating that that numbers. All right. So how how are we doing? How can we find the the parents? Right. So we have a zero. One one one. So the way we are finding the parents is just as you guys can see, we just uh, revert the last the the least significant one. So the way we're doing it, we we are like doing uh, uh, x. Let's say the current. The current one is, is index is i. We do a i, do a end with this minus i, and then we we do a i minus that. Yeah, that's how we find the how we find the uh, the parent. So for this formula, you know. If you guys don't don't understand it, just remember this is how we uh, this is how we uh, remove the first re reverse the least significant ones by uh, by converting by doing like what this is like the this is a two's complement right we do a two two's complement and then we do a uh, we do use the original i subtract the two's complement that's how we get that and then we keep we keep going back until we reach zero. That's how we do the the query. And the second operation, like I said, is the uh, is the update, right? Let's say we're updating. Let's say we're we're adding we're adding three. So let's say we're updating. The index two here. We're adding like we're adding some values to the number to the index two here. So of course, first we'll be updating this value. We'll do a plus plus k, and then we'll just uh, try to double the range. So why is that? Because you know this is from zero to two, but zero to four also include also can includes zero to two. That's why. So the next the next node we need to update is the is four. We also need to do a plus k to here. And again, next one is 0 to 8. All right, so. And then the should be 0 to, it should be 16, but I think 16 is, is out of the uh, the range, assuming we are the, the maximum number we have is 11. So as you guys can see here, we need to find the next available, the next, next node we need to update until we reach the end 
of the of the biggest number. Same thing for another one is for six. Let's say we are updating uh, we're updating we're adding some some values to the number to the index five here. So from zero from zero one zero one, as you guys can see, the next things the next node we need to update is zero one one zero, right? Because five is also included in in, in this segment, which is four to six, and then from six is all is again is like is is eight, which is one zero zero zero. So then there then here we will need another formula to update that to find the next node, which is what which is similar like this one, but instead of subtract, we'll do a i plus equals to the i also plus the uh, the complement of of i of two's complement of i yep okay so this is basically how this the binary index tree works you know i'll just stop here for those who are still don't understand i believe you can find a lot of other videos on youtube that can maybe do a better job than i did so i'll just start implementing these solutions here by using a binary index tree. So, so the way the binary index tree works is that you know we need to find a range of that numbers first. So which means that we need to have like uh, I will use the M representing the maximum number of the instruction, right? So that's basically the range of the uh, of our binary search index tree of binary index tree. And then we'll use like a 1D array to store the prefix, the pre the pre sum of each of, each of the node. And then we have a add i and k, which means that we'll add this value onto this index. So like I said, we have a i is smaller. While the, the i is we still within the range here, we'll do a tree dot i plus k right and then we will find the next the next node we need to update which is the i plus i do an bitwise end with this i same thing similar to the get sum get sum is also we just get i the other sum until i here answer equals to zero and then while i is greater than zero and then we do answer plus the tree dot i right and then here we have we need to find the parents of the current i so that we can find the next segment to summarize right the way we're doing this is do a sub subtraction of the two the complement of the two in the end we return the answer so that's how we uh, the structure of this binary index tree here. So now we can simply use that to find the answer. So the way we're using that is that how can we so so right now the value we're storing on each of the node here is is how many is how many numbers how many numbers is equal or, or smaller than the current number. That's how we uh, that's how we utilize this tree structure. So for i in the numbers in the enumerate instructions, okay, I'll just copy it here. We do a we do two queries first. First, we do a left equals to get sum of the the num num minus one. So why I'm doing this? F first thing first, since the numbers we're storing on each of the node is the it's is the number of nodes on on my left. That's why when I query the left one, I need to exclude myself because we need to find the strictly smaller number. That's why I do a 
number minus one so that I can find the, the strictly smaller numbers, right? And then how about how about the strictly greater number than, than I am, than currently, the con, than currently, than the current numbers? We can simply do this. I sub minus subtract the get sum of of the current number. Right, because the current this i is the the length, the current length of this of the numbers here. Okay, and since the value we're storing on that node is the number that is smaller than that equal smaller than that node, and when we do the update, when we do the add. Maybe I should call this update. So we do an update of the current number, right? And then we only do a, plus, a one here, which means that I'm adding one to this number, to this uh, to this number, and all the all the numbers that include that. So which means, let's say we have we're updating three here. Let's say the number is it's three, right? So when we go back to that index tree here, so we, first we have three, node three do a plus one, which means there are like, and then the next one is four, right? Next one is four. Four will also do a plus one, which means that there are like one more, one more number, which is equal or smaller than four. And then the next one is eight. We also do a eight plus one same just for the same reason so in the end the index tree is updated so yeah and uh, so we also need to update the answer here so that's why we have a minimum of left and right and then again, I'm going to copy and paste this one here. All right, let me run the code here. 45. Yeah, minimum. All right, accept it, submit. Cool. As you guys can see, though, this one is, is basically is much faster than the other one. So the reason being is that both the update and the get sum, they're all bounded with the log m. Because every time we'll do a, we'll do a binary increase or decrease so that the total time complexity for this update and the get sum, they are both log m and hence the, the final the time complexity for everything is n times log m which is faster than the n square right all right cool yeah that's it for this problem and uh, yeah let me know what you guys think i know this binary index tree i highly doubt it will you'll get this kind of problem in a, in a real in interview. But it's a cool data structures for those who are interested in it. All right, I'll stop here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Stay tuned. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.